Hello guys and gals, and welcome. I know I've been putting out a lot of videos today, but there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we've got uh, the, acquisition, the acquisition of uh, Blizzard slash Activision by Microsoft. Um, I figured out a way to give you guys access to RuneWords, and then just as I uploaded the... Uh, up the rune words so that you guys could download and play around with unbending will which is already up on my channel um, we got another rune word we got access to another ladder rune word which is going to be coming out soon uh, known as mist so let's go over this rune word together and i have something special for you uh, because i have already figured out how to do this i will have a download link in the description so you can download this rune word and play around with it on your own computer and have some fun figuring out what kind of uses this rune word can be. Now, uh, this rune word seems to be specifically revolving around the Act 1 Rogue Mercenary. Uh, as we discovered before, during the developer conference, they specifically said they were going to be making rune words kind of like pointed directly at a mercenary. And uh, this is one of those rune words. So let's go over this together and we'll talk about the various things going on here. So we have uh, a Cham, which is a rather high rune, Shale rune, Gull rune, which is a, a decently high rune, Thul rune, and Ith. Uh, a lot of people don't consider Gull to be like that great of a rune, but it is half of a Vex, so think about it that way. Um, so having a Cham rune in there is interesting because Cham runes are unfortunately uh, one of those runes that doesn't really get a lot of love because uh, despite the fact that it's rare, it doesn't really have a lot of very good recipes or uses. And uh, putting a Cham rune in this also limits this slightly because it does give it the freezes target effect. So if you are a person who does not want your corpses being shattered, you're probably going to want to look elsewhere uh, as opposed to this rune word. But the freezes target effect is extremely powerful if you are a character who does not care about corpses. So for instance, necromancers care about corpses, uh, you know, horking barbs care about corpses, um, death century assassins and corpse exploding necromancers and redemption paladins, you know, they might care about the corpses. But for the most part, everyone else that's not a corpse eater kind of character is, uh, is going to be fine with the freezes target on this effect. So let's go over what this uh, what this does and why this is a really good rune word. So we have a damage of 42 to 299, which is pretty good for a bow. Um, it's not as high as the Windforce bow, which is uh, 547, I think, when it's capped out. Uh, but it is a very nice number. Uh, we have a dexterity requirement of 167, which is extremely high, uh, and a strength requirement of 134, because this is, of course, a Hydra Bow. Now, it is a 5-socket rune word, and it could theoretically be put in a lower level item, but it would still be limited by the Cham rune. So if we look at the Cham rune in Diablo... And we try and figure out what the Cham rune specifically has a uh, level requirement of. You will find out that the Cham rune is a, uh, a level 67 item. Uh, which means that it makes this rune word level 67. And I did have kind of like a, a thing. Maybe I was going to put this in some lower level bows. But then as soon as I saw the Cham rune, I'm like, well, might as well throw that right out the window. Because the only two bows that this is going to be good in is the Hydra Bow and the Grand Matron Bow. And um, the Grand Matron Bow cannot be put on a Mercenary, so we'll have to consider that as well. Now, the recipe is not super ridiculously expensive. The inclusion of the Cham Rune does make it a little bit hard to come by, but um, Shale, Gull, Thal, and Ith are not particularly rare runes, the Gull Rune being the only one in there that is a little bit hard to come by. So let's go on to the um, the stats here. So we've got level 9 Concentration Aura when equipped. And uh, Concentration is a very nice ability that prevents the monsters from preventing you from attacking. So when you attack with Concentration, um, there is a small percent chance, it's a 20% chance, that your attack will just completely be uninterruptible. Um, there are abilities in the game that are uninterruptible to give you an idea of what this is like. So Smite, for instance, is uninterruptible. So you cannot actually be interrupted when you are smiting. So imagine a small percent chance to be as uninterruptible as a smiter, which is pretty darn good. And at level 9, which is what this particular... Um, 
aura is, we are looking at a 180% bonus to damage, uh, which is fairly nice. And, uh, and it will have a radius of 21.3 yards, which is pretty darn cool. So it's going to hit just about everything within range. Um, it's interesting that the only other concentration item that you could possibly put on a mercenary, um, Pride, also has the freezes target effect. And, um, and I say this because both of them make poor choices for a necromancer because the necromancer needs his corpses. And so we're looking right now at an item which also has concentration aura and also has freezes target. And I don't think they did that by accident. Uh, we have plus three to all skills, which is freaking amazing. Uh, plus three to all skills is definitely going to beef up the mercenary, and it's going to beef up a player as well. So this can be a very powerful player item as well as a very powerful mercenary item. Uh, we have 20% increased attack speed, which of course is coming from the shale rune, and it's always nice to have attack speed on a bow. The uh, faster you attack, honestly, the better. 100% uh, piercing attack on this bad boy. So that means that every single attack that is fired from this particular bow will pierce with a 100% chance uh, and will hit targets behind it and pierce through them too. Uh, having a 100% pierce passive is an extremely powerful ability that a lot of people don't really understand because you have to understand that if you want pierce as an Amazon, you have to build down to it and you have to put points into it to make it work. But if you have 100% pierce on the bow that you've chosen to use, you can save all those skill points and put them somewhere else. And this is extremely powerful in building your character. And as a rogue mercenary who has no piercing ability, having 100% pierce on her bow is going to make a huge difference in the amount of damage that she can output. And uh, we have... They, they did talk about changing the skills on the Act 1 Rogue Mercenary to give her more of an AoE skill set. So uh, this 100% Pierce may have a stronger effect than you guys realize. We also have a 327% Enhanced Damage, which is pretty massive. And, uh, and is going to have a huge difference in the amount of damage that we're outputting here. That is, that is just a lot of enhanced damage for a bow. Uh, we have plus 9 to maximum damage as well. And something that I noticed when I actually created this rune word uh, is that their number is wrong. Um, I don't know why this particularly is, but when I actually went through the process of creating the rune word uh, for you guys to download, which is something that I'm going to have uh, as a link in the description, um, the plus 9 to max damage was not being calculated into the number. So instead of 299, it's actually 299 plus 9, uh, which is uh, 308. So it's a little bit more damage than it actually says there, uh, which is interesting. Uh, we also have a 20% bonus to attack rating, which is always great to have on a, uh, a bow because it's going to increase the amount of times that you're actually going to connect your hits. Uh, being able to pierce doesn't exactly mean anything if you can't connect the hits that are piercing. Uh, we also have a 3 to 14 cold damage, which is actually going to improve the freezes target. I don't know if you guys know how this actually works, but additional cold damage actually kind of helps the way that freezes target works, which means the targets will stay frozen a little bit longer. Uh, we also have 24 to vitality, which will do nothing for the mercenary, I don't think. I don't think mercenaries actually have vitality, so that would be strictly a player stat. Um, and then we also have all resistances 40, which is amazing. Um, that's going to pretty much cap off the resistances on your mercenary and make them a lot more tanky. And as a bow Amazon with no shield, you know, we don't wear shields as a bow Amazon, having resistances on a bow is absolutely great. Uh, one of my favorite bows in the game, uh, Witch Wild String, is actually has all resistances 40 on it, and it comes in super handy in clutch situations where I need those extra resistances. Um, it actually is one of my good swap two bows specifically for that purpose. Now we are going to flash over to a character which I have created. Um, I have specifically created a character that actually has this item on them so that you guys can test it out because I figure, why not? So I'm going to take this off the screen here and we are going to load into the Mist character. Um, I have preloaded this character with a variety of items as well as uh, given her the correct stats and hit points and things like that so that you can utilize her to your specific uh, intent. Now, this particular character is holding two items 
Uh, one of them is a crafted item, which, as you can see, is the exact same stats as the Mist Bow. So we have here the same exact stats, the level 9 concentration aura, the uh, plus 3 to skills, the 20% increased attack speed, the Pierce's attack, which I don't know if you notice, but it doesn't actually say the percentage. It never has. So this the 100% piercing attack there written on the the graphic isn't really quite correct because it's never stated the percentage. Uh, we also have the 320% enhanced ED, the 9 to max damage, the 20% bonus to attack rating, the 3 to 14 cold damage, the freezes target, the 24 vitality, and the all resistance is 40. So right now we are looking at two bows. We have the, uh, the Grand Matron bow, and we also have the Blood Bite Hydra bow. And I did make a mistake on the Grand Matron bow. It doesn't have its passive skills. It's supposed to have plus three passive skills on it, and I will fix that before I upload the file. Uh, but uh, but I will get to that in just a minute. All right, so here we are. We have the uh, the plus three with the bow and crossbow skills, and we also have the plus three, uh, sorry, the, the uh, hydro bow. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the... Um, the Grand Matron bow, we're going to put it on us, and we're going to take the Hydra bow, and we're going to put it on the Bow Girl Mercenary. Uh, so let's go ahead and give ourselves the appropriate number of stats so that we can actually utilize these items. And uh, we need 167 strength. Whew, quite a lot of strength there. Uh, or 167 decks, my bad. There we go. Um, and I've also given uh, myself a mercenary who will also wield the Hydra Bow. Um, I've got her some equipment here. She's going to be rocking an Andariel's uh, Visage, which uh, she can't use. Why? 102 strength? Level 82? She's only level 82. Oh, no. She can't use her Andariel's Visage yet. Well, she can use her uh, Fortitude, so uh, that'll be just fine. She's almost level uh, level 83. Well, poopy doopies. <laughs> uh, I could probably find something else to put on her in the meantime. It's not that big of a deal. I'll put this in here for right now, and, uh, and I'll grab her something else later. She'll be all right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of testing out this character, and we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, what kind of character should I build with this particular bow? Well, it seems to be very built around plus the skills, uh, with plus six to bow and crossbow. Uh, we also have a rather nice amount of damage on this bow, as well as the Frieza's targets effect. I feel like this could be a relatively awesome bow for a... Uh, rather specifically, a Freezing Arrow Amazon. So uh, we're going to play around with a Freezing Arrow Amazon, and we'll uh, and we'll figure it out. All right, so let's have some fun building a character real quick with this, and uh, and we're going to see what we can do. So um, obviously, we don't need Pierce, which is uh, which is interesting. So uh, we're just going to completely ignore the fact that Pierce exists. And uh, I guess we could grab ourselves a Valkyrie. Uh, why not? We'll just go ahead and get a Valkyrie. And we want her to be at least level 17. So we're going to beef her up ever so slightly. And then uh, one for skills. Well, uh, let's go... Let's do a Strafe slash Freezing Arrow. That sounds interesting. So we're going to max out Strafe. We're going to max out Freezing Arrow. We're going to max out Cold Arrow. And, um, you know, we can also max out Ice Arrow to really get that the, the freeze duration on this as high as possible. And, uh, and we can also max out Penetrate for increased to, uh, well, we can't max out Penetrate. We can put one more point to Penetrate. That's it. So we're running a Valkyrie. We've got our uh, Bow Girl Mercenary. And, uh, and let's see what kind of uh, damage we can put out, shall we? All right, so let's go somewhere that uh, benefits our particular build. Um, trying to think right off the top of my head, but um, I know that Frigid Highlands is full of cold immunes, which is probably not going to be the best for us. But, uh, but you know, we could go there anyway. Why not? Uh, we'll see how Strafe does in that particular type of environment full of cold immunes. Uh, the Concentration Aura is uh, giving us a pretty nice healthy boost in damage, so hopefully this will, uh, this will do nicely for us. 
<laughs> oh, the amount of the amount of torch procs certainly didn't do poorly. Um, I will definitely say that we didn't do poorly. Found an unidentified amulet there. I didn't even put the rest of my stat points in. Let me go ahead and put my uh, my life in, so I've got some actual life to deal with. Hey, some monsters that are not cold immune. What do you know? Let's see how the mercenary does on her own. I'm kind of interested to see how she uh, she manages to kill things, or if she kills things at all. I mean, she certainly is killing things. She's nowhere near as fast as I am. Let's see how she does against a Shank. Shank's already at half HP, but... Um, Move, remove some of these monsters from uh, the equation. And she took out Shank pretty darn fast. That's actually uh, kind of impressive. Uh, she is very single target, though, and that is one of the things that they talked about fixing, by the way. So they talked about fixing the fact that uh, the, um, the Act 1 Rogue Mercenary is very single target damage. They, uh, they specifically said in the developer console, they didn't, they didn't actually give us an exact skill or anything, so let's keep that in mind. But they did tell us that they were going to add AoE abilities to the rogue's repertoire. So uh, right now she has access to Inner Sight and she has access to Cold Arrow. Um, and we've talked about this previously, but uh, might as well go over it again. What AoE abilities could they be talking about? Well, Multi-Shot is AoE. Uh, Strafe is AoE. Uh, Freezing Arrow has a 3.3 yard radius, which means it is AoE. Um, An exploding arrow has a radial effect as well. So, um, so if we are looking at AoE abilities... Um, you think about the fact that the rogue mercenary is either a cold mercenary or a fire mercenary. And this makes me think that they may be giving the Act 1 rogue mercenary freezing arrow um, for the cold version. And they may be giving the Act 1 mercenary exploding arrow for the, uh, for the fire version. Or maybe immolation arrow for the fire version. Um, and um, they could also potentially be getting multi-shot or strafe. Either one of these would be very nice. Um, I actually am quite liking this bow so far. And uh, if you would like to download this bow and play it, um, you can certainly give this a try. You can, uh, you can grab this on the file. I'm going to have the link in the description of the video, so take a look down there. Um, and you can copy this over to your save directory. So let me show you how to do that really quickly, um, just so that you guys are aware. Uh, I'm going to open up my save directory. And uh, we have here Diablo 2 Resurrected. Let me bring this up a little bit so you guys can actually see it. So um, right here is the Diablo 2 Resurrected f directory where your save files are located. It's in C, Users, Daniel, which is my particular username, Save Games, Diablo 2 Resurrected. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to download a file, and that file is going to have the actual character's username in it. So you'll see here that I have missed. Uh, all of these files will be inside of the downloadable, and what you're going to do is you're going to extract those files from the archive, you're going to copy them, and you're going to paste them in here. And, uh, and then when you open up Diablo 2 Resurrected for the first time, after having pasted these inside the directory, you will then have access to the offline character Mist, which will allow you to go over all this stuff. And uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and add it to the archive right now. <clears throat> anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and um, I'm actually kind of excited to be able to provide you with a usable test object so that you can play around with the rune word yourself. And as always, keep watching.